Greetings. I am John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Today, I'd like to discuss the auxiliary equation of the exponential function. I think if you recall in a previous video, I discussed the sine function. And so I'm going to show you some interesting things about the exponential function in this video. Uh, and I'm going to do some comparisons to your bogus mainstream calculus. So let's begin. Now, <clears throat> I showed you some time ago that E is really just a binomial and you don't require limits or anything to find the E series. You don't even need calculus. All you need is the binomial theorem. And I showed you that if you start off with n equals one, it's the straight line that you see there, x minus one, I'm sorry, x plus one. And uh, uh, that straight line <coughs> steadily becomes e as n goes to zero. So uh, in fact, e is equal to uh, the function of x, the, the E is equal to the function which takes the inputs x and zero, and E itself is equal to the function which takes the same function which takes the inputs one and zero. So you can play around with this arithmetic. I, I, I've also written an article showing you how to do it, um, and that will explain whatever you need to know. It does this in a lot more detail. So I'm going to leave that now, and I'm going to show you how the auxiliary function for E works. Okay, so in the new calculus, we know the definition of a function is actually equal to the derivative plus some auxiliary expression, which is always equal to zero. So if we want to find the derivative of E, well, actually, in this case, we already know it because we've already set this to zero and we found E, but I'm going to use the fact that we know the derivative of e to find an auxiliary equation, which is the relationship between the variables x, m, and n. And in this special case of the exponential function, we can remove x entirely, as you'll see in a moment. So over here, if we substitute the values in the finite difference quotient, and then we know that the auxiliary expression is zero, so we can just leave it out and what we have here is this equation from which it follows that m plus n is equal to what you see on the right hand side here. And this implies one of the uh, forms that one can derive from this equation is this. It turns out that this has the solution which is uh, an analytic continuation of the product log function, okay? So it's very interesting. Um, as you'll see in a moment, uh, the bogus calculus, let's just draw that up there. Okay. The bogus calculus also has a solution, but there is a, a very big difference because the solution that's provided in the bogus calculus actually means nothing. In the new calculus, uh, this expression here has a value for M that you place in here. So if you choose an M here, you, you can take any random n, then this will give you the corresponding n. So you can find an mn pair in the new calculus using the Lambert function. Well, it's actually also uh, commonly known as the Lambert uh, function, which is the inverse of uh, a particular function uh, in terms of w. Okay, and that's probably too far, that's way too far advanced mathematics for most of you. Uh, so I'm not going to deal with it because it'll take too long and I don't think most of you will understand. But that, at any rate, it turns out that in the bogus calculus, the solution doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Okay, now, if you try to do the same in the bogus calculus as you do in the new calculus, uh, you can't really proceed even past this step because you can't drop the limit and write h is equal to e to the h minus one. <laughs> See, this is tied into the limit, so there's nothing you can do with it. It's, it just stops right there, it's dead, okay, as I've, as I've shown you. But new calculus, you can do a lot of things. Um, you can 
find some very fancy uh, solutions, uh, even to partial differential, partial differential equations. And there are some interesting functions that were considered by Lambert, such as this one. And uh, also Einstein himself, who considered the series of the infinite power tower. And it can be expressed as clo enclosed form as this equation here, which is also in terms of the Lambert W function, okay? So that's pretty interesting. The complex solutions are not actually interesting at all. They're in fact pretty useless. Uh, the only useful solutions are the real solutions. And those have been used in practice and in theory. For example, in uh, electrical engineering and uh, uh, projectile theory and many other scientific applications. So I'm not going to go into those because that's not the reason of this video. But at any rate, I've just given you a demonstration on how you can find the auxiliary equation in the new calculus, which has so many uses, okay? But in your bogus calculus, you really can't do anything past this point here. And that's all I really wanted to discuss. This is a new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel, and hopefully in the next episode or video, I'll show you how to do a little bit more. Till next time, goodbye.